Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin SL TV. Today, I would like to share how to create a dynamic amortization schedule without using VBA. Let's consider this illustration. Before we move on to loan amortization schedule, let's write formulas for the three items that we are going to use later. For the total number of time points, is simply the number of compounding periods times the loan term. Press enter and we should obtain the correct value. For the scheduled payment, we can use the PMT function in Excel. Bracket for the rate, we should reflect the compounding period. So we take the annual rate divided by the compounding period, comma ample, which is the total number of payments that we are going to make, which is this amount, comma PV, which stands for present value or the loan amount. Bear in mind that if we wish to return a positive value at the end, we should press negative before selecting the loan amount. Common future value, since this is loan, which means that we should expect we have fully repaid this value at the end of the period, or in other words, zero amount left. Common the type. In this video, I'm going to assume an end of the period basis. So we use zero for this video, close bracket and press enter. If you don't want to include any currency in this cell, go to home, simply click on the comma button. Now let's move on to the last date of payment. We can use the date function in Excel to generate the date. Firstly, let's record the year of the start date by using the year function, close bracket, comma. We use the month function to record the month of the start date, comma, and the date function to record the day of the start date, close bracket and close bracket. Now we should think of the adjustment. I'm going to adjust only the month while holding the year and date fixed. We don't have to worry here because if let's say the month exceeds a calendar year, this will be contributed to the year. What we have to do here is to add the total number of payments that we are going to make, that is the time points. But then we should bear in mind that since the first day of repayment has taken one time point, which means that we should have 19 time points left instead of 20 for this case, so which means that we should minus 1. Also, bear in mind that since the number of compounding period is not fixed on a money basis, which means that we couldn't make a one month gap in between the time point as this made wrong. So in other words, further adjustment needed. So firstly, let's make a bracket for the time point left and we times 12 divided by the compounding period. And now let's check if we take 12 divided by the compounding period for this case is 4, we have left. In other words, that is a three months gap in between the time point, which is a quarterly basis. That's right. So we are correct for this case. Press enter and we should obtain the correct end date. Now let's move on to loan amortization schedule. Firstly, we have the payment number, which should reflect the time points in order to make sure that this array will be generated automatically we should use any array generating function in excel for example for this case we can use the sequence function so we select the time point and press enter and excel will generate the correct number of time points automatically every time the value is changed next let's move on to the payment date since we have formulated the last date payment let's click and now go to the form Formula bar, select the entire formula, copy, press the ESC key or the escape key on keyboard. Go to the cell, double click and paste it. Also, as long as dealing with time point, we use the sequence function so that it will be generated automatically. So we start with bracket, remember to close bracket. Now press enter and the date will be generated automatically. Unfortunately, as we can see, the date here is not formatted according to the format that we want. Instead of formatting manually in the number format and ask users to format themselves whenever a new cells or new columns needed, we can actually format by using the formula. What we have to do here is in front of the date function, we add the text function. Bracket and now move to the end. Add comma, type the format that we want. So start with quotation mark followed by the format. So we have date, month, and year. Now close quotation and close bracket. Press enter. All will be formatted according what we want as we can see here. And there are all quarterly basis. 
which is the one that we are looking for. Now let's move on to the beginning balance. To obtain the correct value, we can use the F3 function which stands for the future value function in Excel. Bracket also for the rate we should reflect the compounding period. So we take the annual rate divided by the compounding period, comma and per. Again, as long as still with the number of time points, we should use sequence function. Select the time point, close bracket. Consider that this is beginning of the balance, which means that no payment should be made at this time. So what we have to do here is minus one. Since one payment minus one, which means that zero payment made. Now comma PMT, that is the payment that we are going to make in every time point. That is the fixed payment for the scheduled payment, comma the loan amount. Also make a negative before selecting the loan amount, comma the type. Also use zero in this video, close bracket and press enter. And we should obtain a sequence of correct balance at the beginning of each time point. Also to format the number, in front of the function, we type text function, bracket, and now move to the end, type comma, start with quotation mark before the format, use hashtag to indicate undecided numbers, use comma for thousand separator, followed by three digit. Remember, for the last digit, we should use zero instead of hashtag, followed by dot zero zero to indicate two decimal places close quotation mark and close bracket and we should obtain the correct format that we want now let's move on to payment since the payment is fixed for every single time point instead of using the sequence function to generate the array this time we can use the make array function the number of rows here depends on how many number of payments that we are going to make so let's select a value comma the number of columns that we need is only one since all the payments will be made in this column so we can put one comma the function that we are going to use remember we should always start the function by using lambda function and now we should give two parameters one for row and one for column simply use any letters that we want so i'm going to use r to stand for row comma followed by c to stands for column comma the function that we are going to use since all the values here will be fixed at the schedule payment so select the value and close bracket to indicate the end of lambda function close bracket again to end the make array function press enter and we should obtain the correct value as we can see here also to format the number we should go to in front of the make array function type text bracket and now move to the end comma quotation mark and the format that we want close quotation and close bracket press enter and now will be formatted nicely as we can see here Next, the principal. Before we move on to principal, we should first determine the interest. Since the principal depends on the interest, where principal plus interest is equal to the total payment that we made for each period. And the interest depends on the balance that we have. So what we have to do here is go to the balance formula and we go to the formula bar, select the entire formula, copy. Also remember to press the escape key on the keyboard and now move to the interest, double click and paste. What we have to do here is to change the future value among here as this is the future value but not the interest charge on each period so we should times the interest that is the annual rate divided by the compounding period press enter and we should obtain the current interest as we can see here and now let's move on to the principal which is equal to payment minus interest so we can use the make array function again we have rows which is depending on the number of payments comma column also only one column comma function always start with the lambda function two parameters again so let it be r and c or any other letters this is not fixed comma again and now move on to the function that we want to use to generate the principal to make it simple let's consider only the first row to obtain the value in the first row it's supposed to be e15 minus g15 if you want to run through as a variable this value shouldn't be fixed but we should use together with the row generator so in order to do so we should change 15 to r but then 
we should bear in mind that R is the value starting from 1, 2, 3, and so on. If we put ER directly, as we can see, there is something a function or any unknown value. So what we have to do here is use quotation mark to turn it to string, and we join using emphasis. And the R here is 1, but what we need is 15. In order to change 1 to 15, very simple. We take 14 plus R. At the end, we will have 15, 16, 17, and so on. Same goes to G. So we use quotation mark to turn G to string, and we use emphasis to join the row number, which is 14 plus R. Uh, do not stop here since this is string minus string. Excel not able to calculate for us. To make sure that Excel able to read the value in the particular reference, we should use the indirect function. So go to in front of this reference and we type indirect. Remember to close bracket to end the first reference and now go to the second reference. Also use the indirect function. Also close bracket. Close bracket again to end the lambda function. Close bracket again to end the make array function. Press enter and we should obtain the correct number as we can see here. Also to format the number, in front of the function we type text bracket and now go to the end of the function, comma and the format that we want. Close bracket, press enter and we should now obtain the correct format. And now let's move on to the ending balance. Without figuring out the formula again, we can make use of the beginning balance. So go to the formula bar and copy. Again, use the same procedure and we paste. For this time, we should then minus since a payment is made for each time point. So we press enter and we should obtain the ending balance. As we can see, the ending balance of the first period is equal to the starting balance of the second period. That's right. And finally, we can move to the cumulative interest, which is accumulate the interest one by one for each time point. For this case, we can make use of the make array function again. The number of rows against depends on the number of payments that we have. So select the number of payments, comma, number of columns, also one comma the function again we should start with the lambda function then only we can give the parameter as well as the formula that we want to use so r followed by c and now we should think of the formula we can use the sum function since we want to sum the interest which is in column g don't think of others let's sum only one value which is g15 so we can type g15 since we want to run through starting from the first value and so on since this is cumulative interest or in other words the cumulative sum so we should have g15 fixed and followed by unfixed cells maybe like g15 g16 g17 and so on so from here as we can see this will definitely be fixed then what we have to do here is to change this value from 15 to 16 and so on in other words we should used exactly the same method that we done in the principle where we use string to join with the variable r. Again, we should use emphasis to join the variable r. Since we want to start from 15, again, we use 14 plus r. And now introduce the indirect function so that Excel able to read the value in this reference. Close bracket to end the indirect function, close bracket to end the sum function, close bracket to end the lambda function, and finally close bracket to end the make array function. Press enter and we should see that all zero. This is because we should bear in mind that the interest of the values that we format here using the text function and some not able to calculate a text. Therefore, to convert or make a text countable, we should add negative in front of the indirect function. But then this will turn the interest to negative to make it positive again another negative. Now press enter and we should obtain the correct cumulative sum. Also to format the number, in front of the make array function, we type text bracket and now go to the end comma, type the format that we want, close bracket and now press enter. We will have a nice format that we want. And now a fully dynamic amortization is developed where the time point will be updated automatically as we can see here. Regardless what value we change, Excel will auto update as we can see here and also the time point. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.